everyone, it's Lucy Fink. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Before we get started, give this video a thumbs up if you're into gymnastics or stretching, or if you're just excited to see what happens to me this week. Be sure you're subscribed to my YouTube channel for future videos by clicking on the red subscribe button and click on the little bell icon so that you get alerted whenever a new video goes live and you can be the first to come and comment. Thank you so much to Glad for sponsoring today's video. Stay tuned for a little later in the video when I'll share with you the smoothie packs that I prepped for this week on Sunday. As you probably know by now, whenever I'm making a new YouTube video where I try either the routine of someone else or something that's relevant to the life or lifestyle of a specific type of person, I always like to connect with a person that actually has that job and lives that lifestyle so that I can give you their expert advice and their expert information. I know that I am definitely not an expert in every field. I just pride myself on being an expert at trying things and being willing to try things and explore. So for this week of learning to stretch like an Olympic gymnast, I knew that if I was gonna put this video out on my YouTube channel, I needed to bring a real Olympic gymnast to my channel. Meet Sam Peshek. Sam and I are the exact same age, so she's a 28-year-old former gymnast. She was a member of the US Women's Gymnastics team in the Summer 2008 Olympics where they won the silver medal. You can check out numerous videos of her doing routines on YouTube, it is so much fun to watch. But this girl is just decorated with championships and awards. I actually think she was the first college gymnast ever to do a standing backflip with a full twist on the balance beam. And I got in touch with her and basically had her put together a full five-day plan for me in order to help me increase my flexibility and learn how to stretch exactly like an Olympic gymnast would. So with her help, I basically broke up last week into five main topics. Day one or Monday was all about toes and ankle flexibility. Tuesday's focus was on shoulders. Wednesday and Thursday were a deep dive into splits. And then Friday, I focused on my pike. If you wanna try any of these stretches alongside me, feel free to use this video as sort of a guide or if you're just more so interested in learning from an expert and watching someone who's not an expert like me struggle, feel free to just watch and enjoy this for entertainment purposes only. So on Monday, I followed along with Sam's routine, which uses a band. I actually didn't have the exact same type of band that she had, which goes over her toes and the ball of her foot. My band was a little bit skinnier, so instead I just put the band a little bit higher so that it sort of achieved the same effect that hers did and hugged my toes. What's up, here we go. I am so excited to lead you through this first day. It's Monday, so that means we're doing toes and ankles. You're gonna pull pretty hard, but still allow yourself to move your foot. You're gonna go ball of the foot to that point. Ball of the foot, flex. Ball of the point, ball of the foot, flex. Ball of the foot, point. Ball of the foot, flex. I did this first on my right foot, then I switched over to my left foot. And then she had me get in a highly uncomfortable position where I was basically bending my toes fully forward and putting half of my body's pressure on them in order to stretch them and increase their flexibility. You are going to sit on your knees and pull one ankle up and keep it in that point position, okay? If this is enough of a stretch for you, still a pretty good stretch. If you need more, like I usually push my heel down. And be careful to make sure you're not sickling your foot. Sickling means that your ankles are kind of making this shape. You want to come right over the top of your ankle for that good, safe, and healthy shape. I was definitely sickling my foot and my ankle at first, but once she said not to do that, I self-corrected. And I filmed myself doing this stretch both from the front but also from the side so that you could see just how far my toes were able to curl under. I have no reference, so I don't know if I had very flexible toes or not, but I definitely felt the need to use blocks to support myself, which took a little bit of pressure off and felt really good. And then she had me go up on both sets of toes at once, which was pretty difficult for me. And as you can tell by the faces that I was making and by me shouting, ow. I definitely found this one to be an intense stretch. When I was done with that, I went into downward facing dog and she had me pedal my feet and then do some forward and backward stretches where I kind of pop over my toes and then go back to a normal down dog position. I've done this before in down dog. Sometimes when I'm in upward facing dog and I'm transitioning into downward facing dog, I sort of roll over my toes until I get there. But it did seem to be a little bit more difficult to do it on Monday because I had already put so much pressure on my toes from the various other stretches that I definitely started to feel the pressure building up. Tuesday was all about opening up my shoulders. 
we are on to our shoulder exercises, okay? So one arm is gonna come up and down, the other arm is going to pull it across the back side. So I started with that standard stretch where you sort of pull one shoulder back behind your neck and head. I did that on both sides, and then I did it again, just pulling a little bit deeper on each side until I was almost leaning. And then Sam put me in this position with my butt in the air where I'm facing forward. Booty goes up in the air, hands are down, and see if you can touch your armpits to the floor. This should feel really good. And then I alternated between arms and I basically threaded the needle through and put one cheek down on the mat at a time and then flipped over and put the other one down. Then Sam had me take a physical structure and lean forward on it, keeping my back straight. I used this very interesting stool slash footrest design structure thing that was in my mother-in-law's house. I don't exactly know what it is. It looks kind of like a rock and it looks like it would be really hard, but it's actually soft and foamy. And I basically just leaned forward, pushing my shoulders through, expanding my chest area. Usually it's like 10 seconds of tension. And then after 10 seconds, your body is, is kind of understanding the motion and the direction that you're wanting to put it in. So it's a little bit more um, lenient and willing to go a little deeper. And then once I was done with those shoulder stretches, I went over to a wall and I did this very simple shoulder stretch that I had never done before, but it felt really good. She had me put one arm straight against the wall and then turn my body in the opposite direction. That really opens up your shoulder. It felt really good. Then I switched and did it on the other side. I was working on a bit of a complex wall that had a lighting fixture on it. So I was sort of working around a lighting fixture and artwork but I did it and the stretch felt great. Also, FYI, I just wanna let you know that every day in this week, I actually went through Sam's video routine and did the stretches that she walked me through more than once in the day. So I only filmed myself doing it once because I didn't wanna waste all the storage on my camera, but I actually did each of the stretches at least two to three times through every day. Wednesday was the start of my split exploration. So if you followed me for a while, you might know that I've been attempting to do a split for a very long time now. I actually made a video earlier this year about my New Year's resolutions and one of them was to do a split. And here I am, late in 2020, still unable to do a split. But with these exercises from Sam, I am confident that if I do this consistently, I could definitely see a split happening sometime soon in my future. Now we're finally getting to the fun stuff, splits. So today we're just gonna do some beginner exercises to get you warmed up for tomorrow's split exercises. So pick one leg, I am a lefty, so I'm gonna pick my left leg first and just do a lunge. So what that means is you're gonna have a 90 degree angle right here and you're just gonna push forward, okay? So you don't wanna be like this and you don't wanna be like this. You just want that 90 degree angle pressing forward. You're gonna pull up your back knee, lunge, Left hand goes on your left knee, right arm pulls back, but careful that you're not like this. You still wanna stay in that squared position and press forward. So you should be feeling a pretty intense stretch right here and in, of course, your lunge. And next I did the stretch where you lean forward over your foot to a pointed toe and then to a flexed toe. I repeated everything that I just did on the other side with my right foot forward, which was a lot harder for me. I think everyone has one side that's naturally easier. And by the time I was done, I felt like I had definitely gotten a nice deep stretch in, especially in the underside of my thighs. And I felt like that was a good lead in into actually trying a split, which I was going to attempt the next day. As I mentioned earlier in the video, on Sunday of that week, I prepared multiple smoothie packs for the week ahead because I've been having a fruit smoothie basically every day this summer. So I had filmed some of the smoothie prep process on Sunday and then later in the day on Wednesday, after I filmed that split section, I filmed this. I've been making a ton of smoothies lately and I've been getting very creative since I'm currently away from my apartment. So to save time, I've been prepping the smoothie packs and putting them in these Glad Flex and Seal bags. Personally, I like my smoothies huge, usually mason jar size, as large as my morning coffees if you follow me on Instagram. So I really try to fit as much in there as humanly possible. I first started using these bags when I learned that Glad Flex and Seal holds the Guinness World Record for the world's stretchiest resealable plastic bag material. And Glad actually invited me to test their record-breaking bag. So on Sunday of this week, I was prepping my smoothie packs for the week and I just began shoving as much fruit and as much greens inside of them as possible to really see how much these bags can hold. I was putting whole bananas in there, 
very large and pointy stalks of kale. I really wanted to test if the bags could hold the amount of stuff that I like to put inside my smoothies. Obviously, I thought it was fitting to test out the stretchiness of these bags this week since I'm personally trying to become stretchier this week with my gymnastic stretches. And surprisingly, despite my need to shove certain items all the way down to the bottom and make the bag a very weird shape, all of my bags sealed, which was very exciting. I really only like to make four of these fruit smoothies because on Fridays I prefer to have something that's a little bit more chocolate and peanut buttery, but these pre-prepped plastic bags really save me a lot of time and I just throw them in the fridge. I even do a few tricks when I'm packing them, like putting lemon on the pre-cut apple to make sure it doesn't brown. And when I'm ready to use these, I just unzip the bag, dump them into the blender, add a little bit of ice and almond milk, and it's ready to go. I love that these particular bags are made with less plastic, but they can stretch more, which ultimately means larger smoothies for me, which is really all I care about. And every time I'm done with a smoothie pack, I wash it out with soap and water, and then I just set it aside and reuse it. All right, Thursday, split day. On Thursday, I did a Sam suggested, and I started out the day by repeating the exact same stretches from the day before, just to warm up my body on a brand new day before I attempted to do a split. The split is definitely the hardest thing for me when it comes to gymnastics and stretching because I just cannot seem to get my legs down touching the floor. There was one moment in there on Thursday when I was able to get down to the floor, but my hips were totally not square. I was really turned to the side, which is probably not good at all for my back and is not a proper way to do a split, but I just can't seem to get deep enough yet, so I have to keep stretching. You're gonna slide down in that split, and it's really important, this is like the number one correction that coaches give gymnasts, is that your, their hands are behind their booty. Okay, so you wanna have your arms behind your butt so your chest is up and strong and your chin is lifted. Another major issue when I'm in a split position is that there's no way my hands can be behind me as Sam was suggesting. It feels so uncomfortable to think of moving my hands behind me. I don't know if my lower back is flexible enough. And once I was in that position, she had me lift up my foot and grab on my ankle, kind of like I did in the stretching version. And she was also calling out specific ways that I should be posing and presenting in my split as if the split was a snapshot of me in the middle of a split leap. She wanted my arms to be out, like very presenter-ish, but I just couldn't seem to do anything that involved leaning backward. Pretty fingers, hold up chest. Again, this is what we hope our leaps look like in gymnastics. Because of my inability to keep my hands in the proper position throughout the split, I did as she suggested, and I went to get some yoga blocks that I could lean on, and that was really helpful just to sort of prop myself up so that I wasn't leaning quite so far forward. And then I moved into an even more challenging suggestion from Sam, which was to elevate the front leg of my split with a yoga block. I am flexible for a regular person, but I actually was kind of known, or I had more the body type where I was stronger and maybe not as flexible. Um, so I had to do lots of this when I was a gymnast. This was not the most comfortable position, but to be honest, it was also not as uncomfortable as I thought it was gonna be, so that was surprising in a pleasant way. But it does appear that I still have loads of work to do when it comes to my split. Sam gave me one final split challenge. Okay, you're gonna start in the split position. Press all the way down. You're gonna grab underneath your heel. Pull on tight and you're gonna roll and see if you can come back up into that split position. So, ready, go. I basically attempted my split and then collapsed over to the side and rolled over myself into the same split position. And I did that on one leg and then I switched to the other leg and did it the other way. And to be honest, it was really, really tough for me. I'm not sure if it's a core strength issue or just overall my body isn't right for this move at the moment, but I definitely looked pretty wild rolling around in the grass. And actually Michael was working at the desk upstairs and he could see me out the window, which is just so embarrassing. My last day was all about pikes and being able to bend forward with straight legs. This has always been somewhat of an issue for me. As you can see, the moment I bend over to touch the ground and I put my hands in the back, my knees start to bend. And so as soon as she said to make sure I was keeping my legs straight, 
I was no longer able to reach the ground. Once I sat down and I reached for my toes, I realized this is another example of where my knees just naturally start to bend. I realized that it's really difficult for me to bend forward without my knees also bending. And actually when I got into this slight straddle position and I crawled forward to lean as far forward as I could, my knees bent. So I did this funny thing where I tried pushing my knees down with my hands, but doing that raised me back up again. And the moment I'd lean forward, my knees would bend, at which point I would repeat the cycle. So I really was never able to have straight knees and be folded forward, but I'm working on that. Then I leaned to the right side and the left side, trying to keep my legs straight the whole time. And then I did as Sam suggested, and I went through this entire exercise sequence again. You made it through all five days of stretching like an Olympic gymnast. I am so proud of you, but I also have to remind you that stretching is a lifelong commitment. So keep at it, keep working on those exercises I gave you, and then maybe I'll see you in the Olympics one day. I filmed myself at the start of the week in an attempt to do a split and also an attempt to do a scorpion position, which is something I used to be able to do really well when I was young. And here's the before and after. I do think my flexibility improved slightly and this is just one week of doing a few simple stretches and not even for a very long time every day. So I think if I were to continue and keep this up and keep doing Sam's regimen, and if I did it every week for at least 15 to 20 minutes a day, I would definitely see noticeable improvements to my flexibility. I hope you liked watching this video. It was so much fun for me to make and it was really fun to work with a professional gymnast. Comment below and let me know what other types of jobs you're interested in learning from and what other types of cool people you want me to bring on this YouTube channel. I have endless video ideas floating through my head. I sometimes shoot up in the middle of the night and jot down an idea in the notebook next to my bed, but I'm always looking for new ideas from you, so please comment them below. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my YouTube channel for more content like this, and I'll see you next time on YouTube. Bye.